Julie Waldorf, JulieWaldorf.com, and I have my sister here, Laura Lee Waldorf, who at one time, about 15 years ago, was homeless. So, Laura Lee, tell your story, will you? Well, my experience behind homelessness was volunteer because I was one phone call away, which I eventually made in order just to get out of the situation. But I hung for three months in Santa Cruz, California mm -hmm. as a homeless person. I actually had to create my own food, my own shelter. My shelter was an old 350 Ford truck that was used for the farm. Mm -hmm. and, we, and I found a camper shell on the side of the road and put it on my truck and there was my home. Uh -huh. And... Um, what we would do, the homeless people were very tight, and they taught me skills and stuff on how to handle the streets. Like, for example, if someone come, people would come and beat up the homeless. And what you do is anybody wow. approaches the homeless, what you do is you just act crazy. And then they get so scared that they just leave you alone. But okay. that's pretty much the only tactic. But a lot of them get beat up and stolen from. And, and wow. Some, from some, who? From other homeless people or basically from people who are just looking out for a good time. Um, young men get together in groups, and then they just go look for homeless to, to harass. Wow. So that's another element Wow, wow, there. wow. Didn't know and that then, was going on. And then okay. um, where to park your vehicle, and you get rousted. You don't know if you're going to get rousted. You have to be really quiet within your vehicle mm -hmm. and make sure no one sees you go in and out. And God forbid if you have to pee or anything. But there's a way of doing that, too, to be able to make it sort of you're doing a stealth kind of lifestyle. Okay. And then you're in the in the world doing the and you like I found myself at Safeway one day uh -huh. and I was starving. Uh -huh. I was so hungry and I saw all these people just buying their food, no big deal, and they didn't even know I was standing there starving. I mean, literally. And I, but I yeah. didn't. I couldn't shoplift. I couldn't bring myself to shoplift. I was getting mm -hmm. angry at the other people though, uh -huh. getting very angry that they just that that there was so much abundance and I couldn't even touch it. Mm -hmm. So that made me realize the what going on and that was 15 years ago yeah it's probably worse now because 47 percent of the not, children are starving in our country now which is sad yeah so now children add children to the pile there's a it's a free-for-all but there is a, yeah. a automatic for... wonderful community that appears and people who don't have nothing give what they don't even have i'd have five dollars and give three of it away because two was a, would work for me for that day mm -hmm. and i knew how to generate money because i I was just by myself, and uh -huh. I was physically fit, and um, mentally I wasn't exactly right because I was going through a bunch of emotional changes and, and realizing what does work and what doesn't work in life. Mm -hmm. And I figured it out, and I ended up coming into a different place. I ended up having a, a, a stalker after me, and I had to leave Santa Cruz because <laughs> of a stalker. Turn stalker. So I found oh, San yes. Luis Obispo, and uh -huh. I just showed up at San Luis Obispo, and I, and I made my phone call, got help from my resource, and got set up in San Luis Obispo to start anew again. Uh -huh. And that's when I became a fisherwoman. That's when I met the community, and then I pulled myself into where I'm at right now, which is to help people help themselves. Okay. And so I've been enjoying life. You can do it. Things can change. Yeah, but you um, had a phone call. You could make a phone call. A lot of the I homeless people option. don't have a phone call, yeah. especially the homeless. But it wasn't. It wasn't really three months of call. hell or anything. It was three months of freedom. I was free from the pressures of so many societal pressures that we are put on just to run our lives regularly. But when you go homeless, it's just about basics, and so it keeps your it keeps you being able to food and survival. Food, shelter, gas for your car, maintenance, um, protection, knowing where to go, um, who not to bump into, which I didn't do that very well, and who to bump into. and um, But it all worked out good, and I experienced it. I mean, dumpster diving for donuts. I mean, I don't even eat donuts, but I they were very tasty donuts because... You were hungry. We were, we were hungry. And we you get wired in with the different merchants that they let you know when they're putting it in the dumpster so you can get it at the back door instead yeah. of going, going into the dumpster. So people really work together in sort of a stealth kind of way, but it is very hairy and scary. And I had someone hop in my truck and take off with me sleeping in the back. I didn't know who was in front, who didn't wow. hear that. Wow. And um, almost drove it over the cliff. Oh, you're lucky you're alive. Then. Well, I just know how to pray. <laughs> <laughs> God willing, right? Not at all. And I am. I love. I'm a lover of life, and, and and experiencing that has made me realize, really, there's no nothing to really sweat about. It's just moving on and being a service to others. If we all came from that space, 
it's a wonderful, and that's what the homeless do. Okay. They have to. All right, Julia Waldorf, JuliaWaldorf.com. Heard it from the horse's mouth. The gal has been homeless for three months about 15 years ago, and it wasn't easy, but you learned a lot. Yep, that's right. All right, ciao, ciao.